and the access she gets. Is that kind of access and that sort of honesty even possible given sort of the reality TV nature um, uh, and the media awareness of the general public? You mean today? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, think, I think the way in which media is much more pervasive in our culture um, has changed things. But I don't think, I think it's made, um, what I think is, is that I think it's made people in positions of power much more um, savvy about what could possibly come out of giving access to a filmmaker, you know? So I think there's more guardedness. I think public officials in general are far more guarded. Um, you know, when you think of the politicians, on the Republican, um, primaries notwithstanding, because some pretty crazy stuff has been happening there. In general, people in, in the public eye now are, are much more practiced and careful about the things they say and do. But I do think that on a, on a more personal level, uh, interpersonal level, and, and among sort of, you know, people who aren't in those positions or the famous, um, I think you can, I think you can get there. Uh, I think people are just, they're just more media savvy in general, but I think that's one of the tasks then as a filmmaker is to try to dig beneath that um, and, and get to something that's more honest and, and true about their lives, which, is, which also includes media, you know, to some extent. I mean, I felt like, I feel like with Interrupters, we were able to get there. And I see films that, you know, I've seen a lot of films that I feel like that, that get there. One of the things that really struck me about watching this film today, and I don't know if it struck you guys, um, is this is at a time when the working class in this country, um, particularly in unions, was highly politicized. And I just, as I was watching this film, I couldn't help but think about um, where we are now in this country in terms of um, politics around work and, and unions. I mean, unions are clearly, have been for a number of years in decline. And there's this association, you know, just some of the, the kinds of ways in which, you know, the, the accusations of class warfare over taxing, um, it's just, it's amazing to me. But people back then, I mean, I dare say that a lot of those folks were culturally conservative uh, that we see in this movie, but politically, um, I'm not saying they're communists, but, but they, they're politically quite uh, uh, strident in, in, wanting, in, in, in their opposition to what they perceive to be the, the entrenched powerful interests that control their lives. And um, that kind of uh, awareness, I think among you know, the 99% today is, is not nearly as, um, I, I don't know, I don't feel it's nearly as strong. I mean, I think something's happening now, which is really interesting with, around that, but, um, but it's amazing to see this sort of time capsule of the film where people, you know, I mean, the women in this film are so powerful, you know, the, the wives of minors, that one wife in particular, um, she's an incredibly heroic figure, and so. And, and that's one of the other things I wanted to ask you, uh, for, for those of you who are staying with the Eruptors, uh, uh, for the Interrupters. Uh, I, I thought they're required, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> you guys have to yes, you are. Yeah. Spend eight hours with us today. Uh, in that film, uh, you know, Amina sort of emerges as the main character of the documentary, you know, can have a main character. And no matter who I talk to um, uh, for this book, whether they're a feature film light maker, uh, Danny Boyle, or, or a documentarian, they talk about the moment when the film takes off. Um, and so I'm curious, uh, you know, for you, while you're shooting it, the moment when you let go, when you know that it, the film has taken on a life of its own, and the characters start to become the main characters? Well, that's a good question. I, I think that I've always viewed um, filmmaking as a, you know, as a, as a uh, journey of discovery, you know, that, that you start out with an idea of what the film's gonna be about. You may start out um, often you start out with knowing who you want to follow or you discover it fairly early, who you want to follow or uh, is going to be the center of your story. But the act of making the film, you know, consistently in, involves revelations that you could never have thought of or anticipated or contradictions or complexities that, 
that you couldn't have. Because if you knew it all to begin with, it wouldn't be much fun to make the movie. But no matter what, how smart you think you are, the issue. And I've done, I've done films. We did a miniseries at Craig Temkin called The New Americans, where we did a ton of research leading up to our filming, where we followed immigrants over a period of time. And, and so I, think, I felt like we were incredibly well prepared to do that uh, series. But the act of making the series completely blew away any previous knowledge we had about it. So I think that, um, you know, in a film like The Interrupters, well, we can talk more about this maybe after The Interrupters, but I think in a film like The Interrupters, we knew Amita Matthews was an incredibly powerful presence, uh, which is why we wanted to put her in the film. It took her a while to come to trust us enough to let us in for her to be the way you see her in the film. In this film, one of my favorite scenes is that scene among the wives, where it starts out with them. Uh, they're, they're talking about how things are frayed and, and you know, they feel like they're losing momentum. And then, they, then two women are accusing each other. Uh, it gets very personal. Uh, and then they figure out a way to kind of patch it up. And I just, I love that scene because it, for me, that's one of those moments in this film, and there are a number of them, where Barbara, you know, clearly this is a film with a, a political point of view that's in, that's in you know, in, in the corner of the striking minors, but it doesn't prevent her from showing the messiness and the struggles that go on in any kind of um, movement like that. She's not trying to, she's, they, they, they come off as heroic, but human, um, very human. And, and I think that that's, um, and you know, she, she worked for a while under, with the Maisels. Um, and if you know their work, um, you know, their work is much, is very clearly, and much more clearly in that more pure cinema verite tradition, where it's, it's, the point of view is sort of there, but not nearly as stridently and strongly as this film. And so this, this for her, I think, also was a departure from her mentors. And the, the, the Mazes did uh, Great Gardens and uh, Salesman, uh, Rolling Stones, Give Shelter. Yeah. Uh, lots of great movies. Lots and lots of great movies. So uh, we have enough time uh, that we can take questions. So uh, Buck is, is floating around there somewhere. I'm over, I'm over here. But I'm on I have no idea what's coming, he's coming over here. Anyway, he's floating around. And uh, if you have a question, just raise your hand. He will find you. Uh, you can ask Steve James.